Joining you here from uh, San Diego, just got back from our missus trip in Tijuana, and this is a, a new good friend, Mark Brown, who joined me on this journey. We're part of a team that went to Tijuana for about five days and just shared the gospel and shared the importance of missions and not only uh, speaking the word of God and sharing the gospel in that community, but even being encouraged and equipped on how to do that heading out into the rest of the globe. So, Mark, I just want to ask you a couple of quick questions. Okay. Um, first of all, you told me the other day that you've, just, you've been saved for three years, three years. Yes. and the Father has moved on you in such an impactful way. You've been on five, five international years. trips in those three years. Can you share well, with people? Well, it would be, well, be four international. Four international. Uh, and then some local. Okay. And can you just share with everyone what has encouraged you so quickly and rapidly to step into such an assignment to desire to share the gospel in all the nations of the world? Well, uh, when I first got saved, uh, I, someone had came to me at church and asked, did I want to go on a mission? Uh, and that was like after the first probably three months, I was just got so involved in church and just hearing the word, and it just filled me with joy. Um, and then when they asked me, I was in another ministry at the time, a garden ministry, and I told somebody that I think I want to go on this mission. Uh, it was on my heart, uh, and they told me that I was just ready to go on a mission, and that uh, put me off of that one. But then another mission had came up uh, like three months right after that, and I immediately jumped on it because my heart was burning just to go on a mission. And what they told me that what they was doing uh, was going to uh, other countries and sharing uh, the word of God mm -hmm. to um, people that just didn't have, uh, well, actually, it was in Haiti the few times that I went, uh, which is mostly uh, voodooism that they, um, uh, they're, I would say, I don't know if that's a religion, a voodoo religion, um, but that's what they practice. Um, so I, I joined that trip, and when I went on that trip, it just opened my heart up to wanting to go uh, to other nations. Um, when that chance comes up for me to go and share the gospel. Um, and actually it's just showing the love of God because uh, to see the people that practice voodoo, you don't see the love in their heart because uh, we did run across people like that. And it's God's love that we want to share uh, regardless of how people are living, uh, how much money they have. Um, you know, they was in homes that just uh, tin roofs um, but you saw the love that was in their heart, uh, the ones that was Christians. Um, so that, that kind of just put uh, more um, in my heart to want to go out and share for the people that didn't have it like we have it so freely in the U.S. where, you know, churches on, you got four churches on one block or two, yeah, yeah. two blocks, you got four churches. Uh, in these areas, it, it's not like that. Uh, and, you know, they have big gates up around the church and walls and, you know, uh, barbed wire fences around the top of the church. And, and that hurt me right there just to see why, why would, you know, you need barbed wires around looking like a prison around a church. And that's because of just the uh, low poverty and people would break in. Um, uh, so that would tell me that it was not enough Christians uh, in these areas. So that inspired me to just want to keep going on missions, um, and then I just uh, really had got into a disciple training, um, which further um, opened my heart up to want to do missions more and share the gospel to other different uh, countries. And now, now my heart, um, when we just had the opening for if anybody want to become full time missionaries, I take care of my mother who has dementia back at home, um, and my other family siblings are helping out right now, but. God is kind of really putting on my heart um, to go full-time uh, missionary. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. and I know that would be uh, hard on my family, um, but every time I went on a mission, God has stepped up and covered for somebody to be there with my mother. So I, I know uh, in my heart that he would take care of all necessary means and ways that um, that needs to be taken care of as uh, long as I'm staying focused and keeping God in front of me and uh, doing his work, I know all will be taken care of. So my other question for you then is, 
that you've ex already explained to some extent, just you know, some things that you could just say that would just encourage someone to ignore any loopholes or any obstacles that could hinder them or any fears okay. that okay. could hinder them from looking at their life and realizing it's more than just about me. What can God do with me? Where can he do with me? And be encouraged to go. What can you say to them to just encourage them okay. to step out? Uh, to, to step out, to encourage somebody to go on a mission. Um, uh, I would think to go on a uh, short-term uh, mm -hmm. mission first. and Because uh, we were just in Tijuana for yeah, just five days. Just five days. And sometime, you know, to someone that first time go, uh, would think that five days, I, at least I thought my first mission trip was a short one um, in Haiti, and it was short, and I was glad to see the U.S. when I came back, but um, I've been aware or around a lot of international people for a long time, uh, and I know um, the poverty over there. I would just encourage anyone to uh, want to get involved and, and go on a mission uh, and just see um, uh, it, it's still joy. You still get fed three meals a day, so um, God is still going to take care of you. So, um, and even when we went into an area where we know it was going to be troublesome, um, God covered us. Um, when we went to Haiti uh, the second time, they was uh, trying to have a coup and oust the president. Um, and that fear, I knew God in my heart was going to protect me. Um, I was covered by the blood and uh, uh, some of the other missionaries that have never went at the time, they had a lot of fear of going because uh, there was a lot of violence. They was trying to get people out of the country. It was at a level four, um, but we went in with God covering us. We had no issues at all. And, and, and today, I mean, if I'm home, uh, I would have a uh, chance of being hurt just in DC area, uh, just walking down the street. Now, and that's me doing an everyday thing. But if I'm out and serving God and doing something in the street, I have I feel though it's um, like a covering, a, a covering. Yeah, that um, even if something did happen to me, um, that I know God has me. So my um, life after this, um, going to heaven, and um, I know that God will carry me um, forever. So I would encourage you to do a uh, short-term mission um, out of the country, any any country out of the country. Um, just get involved uh, and look into missionary. Um, and if sometimes people don't think they have uh, a trade or something that they could do on a short-term mission. And I didn't do much good in schooling. Um, and I was wondering, uh, my first time that I wanted to go, I was wondering like, what could I do um, that could help? Um, on a mission because I, my education wasn't that good but uh, hands on uh, I'm an outdoor gardener and they try to grow their own vegetables and all so God can use you in so many ways um, when you're on a mission you just have it's, it's, it's hard to believe he can use anyone at any age and it's just from what I hear you saying it's just being open to that idea so I just want to share that uh, same sentiments as what Mark has just been sharing is that don't look at your circumstance, your situation and make it think that, well, I don't know how I'll raise the money. Uh, I don't know what to ex expect in terms of the dangers. God's going to cover and God's going to provide. That's the business that he's in and that's what he's going to do. He's just looking for you to say yes and understand we have a, a tremendous need for co-laborers. We have a tremendous need for people who will intercede. We have a tremendous need for people who will go out into the field and reap this bountiful harvest of the nations that God desires and his heart desires. So we're just asking you to just step up into that and realize that you're not necessarily saying I'm going to move to this other country, but the connection you make will make a tremendous connection with them. That's what we saw in the time that we were just in Tijuana and the people that were there, how we were able to love on them and they loved back on us. And the seeds we were able to plant to see people, 22 people on this uh, on this trip that who decided that they wanna give their life into short or long-term missions. Uh, so it was an amazing thing to see. And I wanna encourage you in this as well, in that, Many of the nations in this world, especially in that 1040 window that are, that are 
uh, closed off and that are struggling and lacking in having a, a, a wide number of believers are nations in which there is uh, a, a, some form of color. So I'm encouraging you, if you are a person of color, to really step out and to put it this way, the people of color are going to be the ones who are going to be most likely to reach the people of color. So I'm encouraging you, no matter what race you are, but if you're someone of color who has not ever taken a missions trip, I can't encourage you enough to step out in your faith, trust in God, and watch him move and watch him use you in great and dramatic and powerful ways. So, Mark, thanks Amen. for your time today, brother. All right, all right. All right. God bless you. Live truth, Amen. share truth.